Okay, in this chapter we're looking at the difference between variable costing and absorption costing. It's important for you to know that absorption costing is used for the external reporting, so that would be our financial accounting class. However, variable uh, costing is found to be more relevant for managers and therefore that's why we look at it in this uh, class. Okay, so what's the difference between absorption costing and variable costing? So this is the key to the kingdom right here is this fixed manufacturing overhead. In absorption costing, you can see that the entire amount of fixed overhead for the month, which is what we've typically been thinking about for this class, has just automatically gone into the product cost all of it, right? Period costs of selling and administrative, both variable and fixed, are always product, or excuse me, always period costs here, right? They're always period costs here, but it could be that sometimes the uh, fixed manufacturing overhead can go into those period costs, and we'll see why. Okay, so here's my example of the company that manufactures uh, the fish slapping sandals. So in this case, we have 25,000 units that are produced and we've got this direct uh, material labor head and a variable manufacturing overhead of $10, selling and administering $3. Then we have this elusive $150,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead every year. And now what are we gonna do with that money? That is the big question. Okay, so under the absorption costing, you can see that some of this fixed manufacturing overhead is actually absorbed, that's the easiest way to think about this, in this absorption costing method. Okay, so we've always got the direct material, direct labor overhead, and variable manufacturing overhead. That's never called into question under either the absorption costing or the variable costing, but this fixed manufacturing overhead is what gets kind of dicey. So under the absorption costing, we say, well, you know what, of that fixed, I am manufacturing these 25,000 units, so how about I go ahead and spread that over the cost of the units, okay? So in this case, we've got a $6 additional cost under the absorption costing, giving us a unit product cost of $16, okay? Variable cost, which is kind of what we did the last chapter, just says, you know what, $10 is good for me. All right, so what happens next? If we use the variable manufacturing costs, then this is gonna look very familiar to you. I've got my sales over here. I've got my cost of goods manufactured. Again, those are the 25,000 units that I've produced. I'm just gonna use this $10 unit cost, which is where my direct material, direct labor manufacturing overhead, all that standard stuff that we learned last chapter goes into here. All right, so. The next part is that I've got this whole $150,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead that's simply going to be ex just expensed the entire thing. Okay, that's the philosophy of the variable uh, costing method. All right, then along comes another possible way of what to do with this fixed manufacturing overhead. So in this case, under the absorption cost, you remember we had that $16 a month. So now we're gonna have a little higher cost of goods manufactured. Now keep in mind, we, ma we manufactured the same amount of material. It's just a matter of what unit price we're going to put on that. So here you can see that I've got an additional $6 to total $16 of a unit cost. And under the absorption costing, my net income is going to be a little bit lower. Why? Because excuse me, it's gonna be a little bit higher because I haven't taken all of the fixed manufacturing overhead and applied it to the expenses, okay? Let's review that really quickly here because remember on the previous slide, do you see how I took the whole $150,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead and I just expensed it, okay? More expenses, less net operating, or excuse me, yeah, net operating income, okay? Over here, I've only taken a portion of the fixed manufacturing overhead, in this case that's $6 times however much I sold, and so I have a little bit lower expenses which gives me a little bit higher net income. 
same scenario. Now, why is that? Because I've taken that $6 and for those units that I didn't sell, that amount of the cost is still in my inventory. So think about this. I manufactured 25,000. I only sold 20,000. Do you see that? That's why I've got still 5,000 units still in my inventory. And what's in my inventory? A piece of the fixed manufacturing overhead to the tune of $6 per unit. In plain English, what this is saying is for those units that were deferred in inventory, a certain amount of manufacturing those goods had some fixed manufacturing overhead that was used to manufacture those materials. Does that make sense? All right, so that's the whole philosophy behind it. So now what are we gonna do? Now we're gonna reconcile these. So you can see that my variable costing net operating income, remember, was $90,000, right? I have, and my absorption costing net income was 120,000, do you remember that? Same scenario, I still manufactured 25,000, I still sold 20,000, but depending on the cost strategy in use, my net operating income is going to be different. And why? Because the 5,000 units that I did not sell, there's still $6 per unit that has some fixed manufacturing overhead included in there. Does that make sense? So hopefully not to confuse you more, but just to add to the conversation here is that under the absorption costing, right? That's when I only took a the fixed manufacturing overhead on a unit basis, right? And on a unit basis, I had 120,000 of that 150 that I costed out, right? There's my cost of goods sold, so I expensed that out. That left me with 5,000 units at $6, right? left in ending inventory. It's still, I still occurred 150,000. So at the end of the day, you can see that the $150,000 of fixed manufacturing over costs can be represented either by all at once in lump sums or as it gets sold or still in inventory. So what happens in year two if they produce less than what they sell. You can see that they produced 25,000, they sold 30,000, how'd they manage to do that? Well, they had 5,000 left over from the previous year that they had sold. Unit price still stays the same. Uh, these variable costs still stay the same. Everything else stays the same. So then let's take a look and see what happens under the two methods. Under the variable, uh, it only has the $10 per unit and then the entire $150,000 in manufacturing overhead is always here. So it will have less expenses, more um, net income under the variable costing. Okay, and here's how we true things up. So here's the uh, cost, the 5,000 units that were released from the ending inventory at $6 per unit. So then those two match up. So the variable costing net operating income was more than the absorption costing net operating income and again that's because of the way that the fixed manufacturing overhead was handled. So at the end of the day the fish slapping sandals remained the same and they both resulted in the same amount of net operating income. It was just a matter of when they experienced that income. Here you may want to just get your facts straight that if the units produced and the units sold were exactly equal, which by the way probably never happens, then there's no change in inventory and then the net income under both absorption as well as variable would be the same. However, if the units produced were more than the units sold, then you'll see that these, or it was less than those two situations will happen, but it eventually will work itself out. Okay, I know that there were a couple of you that tried this. Uh, if you can figure out what I'm trying to say here with these two pictures, email me one extra credit point if you get it right. Nobody got it right, but I didn't really expect you to. But one extra credit point is not going to really help you all that much, although I did appreciate the effort. So this had everything to do with putting in the clutch, which actually some of you got right. I should give you a half a point for that, and shifting gears. All right, so that's what we're going to do.
The last point of this chapter is the uh, income approaches. If you have some fixed and uh, segmented uh, expenses and how we're going to handle those. So this is very common for any large company that has divisions either based on geography or product or what have you. And the name of the game here is really separating out the costs. There are some costs that are variable based on the division or the unit and there are some costs that are common to all of them and therefore you will treat those differently. So let's look at the next slide and it, that will make sense. So here I had a company that had a television division and a computer division. They each had their own sales, very easy to figure out, did I sell a computer or did I sell a television, as well as their variable costs. All of that is there, but then you have some traceable fixed costs which are allocated to each of the different divisions or departments right? So if I have a store that only sells televisions and I've got some costs, some fixed costs associated with that, that's pretty, pretty easy to figure out that that's a traceable fixed cost to there. Same with the computers. Maybe I've got an area where I just sell my computers and if my computer division were to go away, those costs would also go away. And then I have some things called common costs and these would again remain even if the division were eliminated and cannot be allocated to the uh, each of the individual segments or the divisions. So that's really the name of this game and trying to figure out where the costs go. So these are the main elements that I want you to know for this.